Now, a 17 News Kern County election update with Jim Scott and Maddie Gannon. And once again, good evening to you. 726 now on election night here in Kern County. I'm Jim Scott. And I'm Maddie Gannon. We'll be bringing you election updates throughout the evening at 26 and 56 minutes after the hour. And we're tracking the high profile races and ballot measures of interest to you. Here are the races we're paying close attention to this evening. Marisa Wood is challenging House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy in his bid to go back to Congress and perhaps become the next Speaker of the House. Could Marisa Wood become the first of McCarthy's many challengers since 20, uh, 2007 to crack the 40% vote threshold? We'll have to wait and see. Will Congressman David Valadeo turn back Democratic challenger Rudy Salas in the 22nd Congressional District? This is a race being closely watched, one of the most hotly contested congressional races in the country as the GOP tries to take back control of the House. We're watching the 16th Senate State Senate District as well. GOP newcomer David Shepard came out on top in the primary, but that was with three Democrats in the race back then. Now it's just him and State Senator Melissa Hurtado. And the race for the 35th District Assembly seat was surprisingly close in the June primary. Democratic newcomer Jasmine Baines trailed Leticia Perez by just a couple hundred votes. Several contested races for Bakersfield City Council. In Ward 1, we have two candidates from our seat community in Raj Gill and Monpreet Kaur, and GOP-backed candidate Tim Collins. And third Ward Councilman Ken Weir facing two challengers in businessman Boyd Benninger and retired electrician Lonnie Dadow. We'll be tracking all the ballot measures for you as well, including Measure K, the one cent sales tax increase seen by many within county government as the essential to the future fiscal stability of the Sheriff's Department, public safety and vital services. Measure L, if passed, would require the Bakersfield Police and Fire Departments to recruit from outside their respective departments when selecting a new chief, not just within the department. And Measure J, if passed, would impose term limits on county supervisors. Those are just a few of the races and issues we'll be following tonight. Now, voter turnout for Kern County's primary election was a meager 26%, the fifth lowest voter turnout in the state. But turnout usually increases for a general election. Will that be the case tonight? Let's turn to our Chris Burton. He's live at County Election Headquarters in downtown Bakersfield for a snapshot of voter engagement in this election. Chris, good evening. Jim, good evening, and you're exactly right. We have seen already dozens of people walking up and uh, submitting their ballots. It seems to be uh, the majority of people are dropping off that mail-in ballot in that drop box. Now, we will probably be waiting for days, even months, to, or uh, weeks, excuse me, to find out just how high turnout was in this election. But take a look at this. We've already seen at least one ballot box take more ballots than it could handle. This was the scene at Kern County Fire Station 67 earlier today that ballot box stuffed with ballots to the brim folks trying to get their ballots in any way they could and elections officials did take their uh, take those ballots out but uh, we've seen at least one ballot box take more ballots than it could handle so we'll be tracking turnout and election integrity here at the elections office tonight but for now in the elections office Chris Burton 17 news all right Chris very good we'll be back here at uh, 56 past the hour now back to Lester Holt and the NBC election team in New York. York.